Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and happy Wednesday. There's a lot happening in D.C. this morning, so when things do open up, when the debates start, when there's any updates, we're going to go to them. But until then, you are starting your morning with us right here on GMSA at 9 a.m. And we're starting up with a topic that is debatable as time itself. Dogs versus cats. Yes, cats and dogs. That, we we're actually talking about that. So it says, this article, the U.S. is split on cats and dogs. And adoption data analyzed by home improvement website Porch.com determined which states favored which pet in 2020. That's right. So the United States, United States states, U.S. states, most likely <laughs> to adopt a cat uh, among the popular ones, mm -hmm. Alabama, Alaska, Iowa, Kentucky, Nebraska, shouts to Nebraska, mm -hmm. um, West Virginia, Wisconsin. You know what? I'm just happy that Texas is not on this list. No, I'm fine no, with no. cats. Yeah. I'm a dog person. Yeah, well, you know, me too. Uh, cats, uh, it says in 2020, an estimated 750,000 animals were adopted from oh, shelters good. in the U.S. since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. So cats were adopted more by a slight margin at 55%. Interesting versus 54% for the adoptions of dogs. So going to the states most likely to adopt a dog, Texas. Let's go. <laughs> and well, I won't name them all, but Arizona, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, uh, some of the one, New York, mm. Hawaii on the list as well. Very interesting. And mm -hmm. another point of interest here, the animal pet adoption rate overall, 54% in 2020. I know I actually have a lot of friends who mm -hmm. had adopted animals, and I think a lot of people at home, they were lonely, and they wanted a furry friend. Yeah, and it was, you know, and it was a great time for a lot of people uh, to adopt a pet because they were at home, mm -hmm. So they could, especially if it was a puppy, you know, they could do the, the whole potty training thing. You right. Know, well, home. I know you have a dog, Gordo. Yeah, but we had him pre-pandemic. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know, but he's loving it, you know. <laughs> he gets to see you all the time now. <laughs> yes, and it's funny. And if we're like, we go outside just to like, I don't know, take out the trash. We come back. Oh, my gosh, you're back. You're back. I missed you so much. Yeah, he, he's getting attached to us. We're, we're getting attached to him as well. But funny thing, I was running mm -hmm. the other day on mistletoe. And for some reason, and I don't know if it has anything. Well, it probably doesn't have anything to do with the article. But big sign, it said Dogs 2020. And I was like, Aww, interesting. Love it. I want to get a dog eventually when I have a backyard. I'm in that apartment lifestyle. Yeah. Wouldn't feel like it's fair. Well, you take him to the park. Yeah, something like that. All right, we've talked enough. Let's check out the 9 at 9. The House of Representatives is prepared to vote on an article of impeachment against President Donald Trump today. This comes after the House passed a resolution overnight calling for Vice President Mike Pence and the Cabinet to invoke the 25th Amendment. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi named San Antonio Representative Joaquin Castro a manager in President Donald Trump's second impeachment. Castro joins eight others led by Maryland Representative Jamie Raskin. YouTube is the latest internet platform to take action against President Donald Trump. The video sharing site has banned his channel for at least a week and that could be extended. We need to do something fast in our community. Our seniors are dying. Health officials ramping up COVID-19 vaccination efforts and new mass vaccination centers are popping up around the country as the need for vaccinations increase. Delta says it will no longer allow emotional support pets on their flights. The airline will only ticket trained service dogs. Delta will require owners to show the proper documentation for the animals that meet the U.S. Department of Transportation requirements for service animals. A big milestone for NASA's Curiosity rover. It has now spent 3,000 days on Mars. It landed on the red planet on August 6, 2012. And NASA says it continues to make new discoveries. Samsung working on two robots that can actually help you around the office and around the house. The Samsung Bot Care 5 and the Samsung Bot Handy 6 are designed to be like personal assistants, both equipped with artificial intelligence. That way they can recognize and respond to your behavior. They can also learn your schedule, your habits, and even help send reminders to keep you on task. Aaron Rodgers says he will be guest hosting an episode of Jeopardy this season. The game show is searching for a permanent replacement for Alex Trebek. Rodgers had previously appeared on a 2015 episode of Celebrity Jeopardy. He says Trebek was one of his idols growing up and he is excited for the opportunity to host. And there is a new Oreo flavor hitting the store shelves. Now introducing the Brookio. A combination of an Oreo and a brownie. They're on sale now, but only for a limited time. And that's your 9 at 9.
I wonder if they're good. Well, I think the I proper mean, thing to do would bring them on the show, have some journalistic <laughs> integrity, and try them in front and, of the viewers. And test them out. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it should be good, right? Like brownies, Oreos, like my favorite things, but I don't know. Well, so we did the story a little bit earlier this morning. We had a deep dive. Obviously, need to check all of our facts. Uh, they Oreos have had 65 different kinds of flavors in just the last 10 years. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty, that's pretty crazy. I don't remember all of them. I, uh, Mike was talking about the mint one. Mm. Um, I, have you tried it? I'm fine with traditional. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, <laughs> me too. Me too. What about you, Justin? Would you try a Brookio? <laughs> I know this might surprise you, but I'm with the OG. Stick mm. with the, the regular oil. <laughs> Although I would try it. You know, brownies are a tricky thing. You got to get the middle part of the brownie, like the edges. Or oh, you don't uh, like the edges? Yeah. Not even. The crispy part. No, the crispy part. I'm with you, Justin. Uh, I bet you don't eat crust on pizza either. <laughs> unless, it's, unless it's stuffed crust. Well, yes. <laughs> yes. Anyway, uh, 41 degrees. Uh, west, southwest, Joey winds at around nine, around 9 miles per hour right now. Dew point is at 32. Uh, temperatures are quickly warming up. We're going to be in the 60s this afternoon. It'll turn into a beautiful day. A lot of sun out there. We're already seeing that now. Pollen count. Mountain Cedar's moderate. It's at 480. So it jumped up a little bit today, but not much. It's still in the moderate category. Let's hope it stays there or even goes down some. We will get a front, though, tomorrow afternoon. And that... Uh, potentially could kick those numbers back up. Uh, temperatures right now still below freezing. Bandera, Kerrville, Comfort, 32 right now in Boulevardie, but above freezing in most of Bear County, where we're at 41 at the airport. Again, forecast, Texas up to 64 this afternoon. We'll get a southerly breeze anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. Guys? Thank you, Justin. Top stories we are following today. President Donald Trump on the verge of being impeached for a second time. This morning, the House is debating if he should be impeached or not. President Donald Trump faces a single charge, incitement of insurrection. After the riots on the Capitol, the attack turned deadly and delayed finalizing Democrat Joe Biden's election victory. A significant number of lawmakers are breaking with the GOP to join Democrats. President Trump released a statement yesterday saying that the impeachment effort itself is causing, quote, tremendous anger, end quote, across the country. And San Antonio police need your help solving two separate murder cases. The first one happened back in May of 2013. Police tell us 42-year-old Noe Hernandez was found dead from a gunshot wound in his living room in the 600 block of Rigsby Avenue. Detectives say if you have any information that could help lead to an arrest, you could be eligible for a cash reward. Crime Stoppers also looking for another suspect in connection to the death of Daniel Mesa. Police tell us this all happened at the Valencia Apartments more than 10 years ago. Investigators say they were called out to the apartments for a robbery just before 3 a.m. back on January 9, 2011. Officers say they found Meza in his apartment suffering from severe head trauma. He was taken to the hospital, but he did not survive. If you have any information on either of these two cases, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number is on your screen. 210-224-STOP. And to the pandemic, local health officials are reporting 2,303 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. And 11 more people have died in just the last 24 hours. Our seven-day moving average now just under 1,800 cases every day. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says this is the highest it's been since the start of the pandemic. And as far as the school risk indicator, it remains red, meaning in-person instruction is discouraged for right now. Meantime... The South Texas Veterans Health Care System is offering COVID-19 vaccinations only on Saturdays. Enrolled veterans do not need to schedule an appointment. They are allowed for just walk-ins. The VA says this Saturday, veterans 70 years old and older can receive their vaccine. Next Saturday, the 23rd, veterans 65 and older can get theirs. The vaccinations will be at the Audie Murphy Memorial Veterans Hospital and the Frank M. Tejeda Outpatient Clinic. A valid photo ID is required to verify enrollment and scheduling for the second dose. In your morning headlines, an officer rescuing a woman from a burning car and firefighters raising money for an elderly woman. Our David Sears is here to explain. Hey, good morning. Another feel good story. This has something to do with the pandemic as well, as you might expect. But first, let's start with this. This is a story full of danger and twists and turns and a happy ending. This is an Ohio a woman has crashed, stuck inside the car, and it's about to catch fire. Deputies show up on the scene. Mary passed out with her foot on the gas. So the deputy starts looking for something to break the window with. In the meantime, two more deputies show up. Stay with me. One of the deputies knows the woman in the car. He and his wife are supposed to have dinner with that woman. In the meantime, the car is starting to catch fire. There are flames coming from underneath the car. 
One of the officers actually gets inside the car, gets the woman out of her seatbelt, then the other officer is able to pull her to safety. You know, to be willing to go into a burning car and pull somebody out is, that is just way beyond anything. Yeah, one of the officers also suffered some pretty bad burns on his hands. He is recovering at home. Threat says she crashed her car after having a diabetic episode and also said before the incident, she was delivering cakes to police stations in honor of Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. She appreciates them even more now. All right, don't look now, but the Summer Olympic Games less than 200 days away and Japan is $15 billion on the line. The problem for the games is the pandemic is getting worse in Japan. Japan was a example of keeping cases low by closing its borders and making sure citizens were adhering to social distancing protocols. However, the country is going through a second wave that has been vicious so far. Matter of fact, the country is under a state of emergency because cases are growing by the thousands a day. Despite the current situation, the prime minister and international committee still planning on the games taking place this summer. I right, take you back here to Raleigh, North Carolina. That is what's left of the shelter that Betty Campbell lives in. Not only did she lose this little shed, she calls home to a fire, but she also lost her son's ashes. Eric Dunlap died from COVID-19 back in April, and she had them sitting in the corner of the shed. Before he died, Betty had lost her home because she couldn't afford the rent, even working two jobs. So she turned this shed that was in her sister's backyard into a home until it burned down. Fortunately, she was in the house when the fire started. She couldn't live in her sister's house because she has a hard time getting upstairs. Now, here's the good news. After the station captain Ali got back to the station, after fighting the flames, she decided she had to do something. She got on Facebook looking for some help, like a gift card or a little money maybe. She ended up collecting thousands of dollars. A company also came to install a stair lift in the sister's house. We're not as divided as we think. Um, I think we really truly share this common humanity um, that makes people want to look out for each other. And finally, let's go to Denver. Yes, that is a refrigerator sitting on the sidewalk. And no, it's not there for trash pickup. It's full of food. Residents drop by with food for the fridge. And those in need can come by and pick some up. The fridge stays stocked. There are even containers for non-fridge foods. The founder says it's not charity, it's community. There are four fridges around Denver, and a fifth is on the way. What a great idea. That so if you can help out, you drop some food off, and if you need some food, you come pick some up. Very similar to the community libraries yeah. they have around. Yeah. Very good. Pretty cool. That's I like awesome. that. Thank you, David. Did you so, do anything fun to celebrate your birthday yesterday? Uh, watched the Spurs last night. Yeah, that's a birthday gift. There Had some Oreos. Ah. Do you have some Brookios? No, just <laughs> great <laughs> double stuff Oreos. Okay. <laughs> And took a nap. Those are good. Those are all good things. <laughs> Glad you enjoyed your day. We'll talk about the Spurs in a minute, too. Yeah. A bit. Yeah. Thank you, David. 9-11, 41 degrees out. That's right. Go Spurs, go. The silver and black bringing a home a win. A recap of the game with highlights. Still ahead later in the newscast. Plus, in your entertainment news, details on a Kate Winslet romance, a quirky horror movie, and a thriller about a resort on a volcanic island. And supporters of President-elect Joe Biden and President Donald Trump gathered as President Trump visited South Texas yesterday. After the break, R.J. Marcus will break down the top details from the president's visit. Taking a look at the stocks right now, Dow down $19. Mixed reactions across Wall Street. We'll keep you posted if anything big happens. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Wednesday. President Donald Trump visiting the Valley to mark his administration's accomplishments with the border wall. RJ Marquez joins us live to recap the president's visit to South Texas. Hey, good morning, RJ. Yeah, good morning, guys. Definitely an eventful day in the Valley as the president made what's expected to be his final planned trip to Texas before he leaves office. Right now on KSAT.com, we have an article about how social media captured the president's visit to Harlingen and then down to the Alamo, Texas area, where he spoke in front of a section of the wall. So opponents and supporters of the president lined the streets before and after Trump's visit. It does not appear as if there was any major violence and things stayed pretty peaceful, but his visit definitely had the region on edge. You can see more of these videos and social media posts on our website right now. 
Also on KSAT.com, photos of the president's visit. They show supporters of President Trump carrying flags, wearing Trump-branded clothing, and waving Trump signs. Supporters gathered near the Valley International Airport to wait for the president's arrival. This was Trump, President Trump's second visit to the Valley during his presidency. And finally, a look back at the president's relationship with the Texas-Mexico border. The wall has been the cornerstone of the president's immigration platform all the way going back to 2016, but it's not the only impact he's had in South and West Texas, especially in the El Paso area. We break down the president's zero tolerance policy, which has been heavily debated, and other moments the president had on the border. We also look at the inroads the president has made with Hispanic voters in the Valley during this past November's election. You can check got all these stories right now on ksat.com and much more. Stephanie, Max. Thank you, RJ. Thank you, RJ. RJ, we're going to see you again to talk Spurs? We are. All Let's right. go. <laughs> Big <laughs> win. Go Spurs, go. I was actually talking to Justin Horn about the Spurs before the season. I think the over-under on wins was set at 29 and a half. Texted Justin. I was like, hitting the over yep. heavy. It's exciting. We feel good about it. <laughs> feel real good right and now. The season is starting off the way. RJ we gave can. me a thumbs up, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it, the season is starting off kind of the way we hoped. So, you know, yeah, West is tough, good. but I feel good about it. All right. Good. Uh, we had our second freeze in a row this morning, guys, down to 31 at the airport, 30 at Randolph, 30 at Bernie Stage, 21 in Kerrville. Definitely one of the cold spots, but things are warming up quickly. As you know, when the air is dry, we got clear skies, you'll see these numbers rebound uh, at a very fast rate. 24, uh, the low this morning in Junction, 31. Del Rio was freeze there, 30 in Carrizo Springs. So everybody saw freezing temperatures yet again. And, uh, well, just ignore that. But on our KSAC Connect, you can see some of the frost there. This was sent in by Claudia out in Hondo. And uh, you can see some of the little, the, the frost that developed on some of the plants. It was cold enough again for that this morning, Claudia. We appreciate that. Meantime, current temperatures across the country. And the only reason I, I want to show you this is that we still don't have any of those big Arctic outbreaks that you would expect in January. A lot of times we'll get the really cold air coming down from Canada and a lot of the country is really, really chilly. But you know what? We're colder here in San Antonio than they are in Cut Bank, Montana. That's pretty impressive. 46 degrees there. And so, yes, it is cold, but not uh, bitterly cold across the country at this point. Right now, 41 degrees again here in San Antonio. West Southwest really winds at about nine miles per hour. That's also going to help to warm us up today with a southwesterly type wind. That should get the temperatures up into the 60s. Still below freezing in comfort. Kerrville, you're at 32, 32 in Bandera, 37 in New Braunfels, 39 right now in Randolph, and 38 down there in Pleasanton, 40 Catula, 37 Kennedy. Uh, dew points, they're on the low end. Air's going to be relatively dry going forward until we get to next week. That's when things really do start to change. We'll get some more storm systems in here, and it looks like the pattern is going to be pretty active next week. We're keeping our fingers crossed for some rain, but right now it looks like it'll hold off until maybe Tuesday. Visible satellite picture showing we've got mostly clear skies, and I'll point this out again. That's still snow on the ground just south of Lubbock. They got a ton of snow there, so it is yet to melt, and there's a couple other spots here where there's still some snow left over. Uh, here's the big picture. Our upper level low moving away. That's the one that uh, brought us some of the action yesterday, and then uh, we'll get clear skies uh, today and tomorrow, although we'll get a front coming through uh, tomorrow afternoon, it's not going to bring us any clouds or any rain, but it will pick up the winds and cool us down a little bit for Friday. S the, the weekend looks good. Saturday's nice. Sunday, we may get a little bit of an increase in cloud cover, and I think that'll be the case Monday too, but Monday looks to be quiet. It is Tuesday where we get the rain coming back into play. Upper level low sits off to our west, and then we'll get some showers uh, around Texas. Right now we have about a 30% chance of rain in the forecast for Tuesday. So I think that'll be our next chance. Rest of today, temperatures up around 64 for a high southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour and then falling off into the 50s and 40s and eventually 30s by tomorrow morning, 37. 70 on Thursday, tomorrow breezy once that front comes through and we think it'll be late afternoon. It cools us down to 62 on Friday, 67 Saturday and Sunday. That sounds nice. And then 59 Sunday, some increase in cloud cover for uh, MLK Day looking pretty good. 65, mostly cloudy. And then we have put in a 30% chance of rain for Tuesday, guys. But sunshine today. Yes. We'll take it. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. 920, 41 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, a lonely monster who lives in a digital world wants to befriend a boy in the physical world. Okay. So I know. I look into come play next in your entertainment news.
Good morning. Welcome back. In your entertainment news, a historical romance, a horror flick, and a new disaster movie all now available to watch. CNN's David Daniel has our DVD and digital roundup. Miss Annie, I've often heard your reputation discussed in the Geographical Society in London. Kate Winslet and Saoirse Ronan star in the period romantic drama Ammonite. Winslet plays a real-life pioneering paleontologist in 1840s England. The love story lands on digital, DVD, and Blu-ray. I just want to be your friend. A lonely monster wants to befriend an autistic boy in Come Play. The creature lives within the world of digital devices and wants to come into the physical world and bring the boy back into his realm. Appropriately, Come Play debuts on digital platforms. Welcome to the most extraordinary and unforgettable experience available on this planet. The new movie Skyfire is set at a beautiful island resort that just happens to be in the Pacific Rim volcanic belt. When the long dormant volcano wakes up, look out, and you thought a dinosaur theme park was a bad idea. Skyfire is now playing on video on demand. Running and screaming in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Netflix announced they will debut a brand new movie each week in 2021. Some will feature big stars from Dwayne Johnson and Gal Gadot to Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence. This week, Netflix is releasing a docuseries about how a serial killer dubbed the Night Stalker terrorized Los Angeles in the summer of 1985. And we want to say a happy birthday to Oriana. Happy birthday, Oriana. One of our producers, producer extraordinaire, Oriana, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Normally she would be here, but mm -hmm. her schedule's a little different. We still love you. Virtual hugs. <laughs> <laughs> Time now, 926, 41 degrees out. A lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. Buying Girl Scout cookies may have been more difficult because of pandemic, but now the organization wants to make it a little easier when you can start ordering them online. Still ahead in Consumer News. Plus, Panasonic wants to change the way drivers see the road's details in the company's new augmented reality display. And there is nothing better than a Spurs win, <laughs> right? After the break, Spurs chat with David and RJ. Good morning. It's time to talk sports, specifically the Spurs, and they're wrapping up an impressive road trip. Nice bow at the top, a nice win in Oklahoma City. David and RJ are back to talk about the silver and black. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning it guys. is a good morning. Wow, yeah. who'd have thunk it? Four and one on this road trip. <laughs> Not me. Ooh, <laughs> RJ. Wow. No, I mean, if hey, we're being completely honest, honest I mean, I, yeah. I thought maybe a couple of wins out of these five games. The Spurs went into this thing uh, two games under 500, so I was – come out of this thing really impressed. I mean, yep. they should have honestly beaten Minnesota, too. I mean, they could have gone 5-0 five five yeah. on this trip, but uh, really nice effort by the Spurs, a full uh, team effort there last night. I was thinking one against one of the Minnesota games and one against the OKC, and that, that was going to be about it. The impressive thing was the way they were able to come out last night, and after a five-game road trip, you know, usually the guys are ready to get home. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. we've been on the road for a week <laughs> and a half now. I'm tired. I want to go home. I want to get my own bed. I'm, you know, this road travel thing is killing us, and it's five on the road, and back to back, and but, you know, thank goodness for Patty Mills coming off the bench last night and Lonnie Walker the fourth again. And they were able to, to, to pull this thing out. And they played some pretty good defense. I mean, they held OKC to 102 points. And these days, that's saying something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, you mentioned Lonnie Walker. He scores 24 points uh, last night. And then the night before, or the game before, he had scored 25. So Lonnie has really stepped up in the absence of DeMar DeRozan. And you can just see all the athletic gifts from Lonnie. I mean, he's just got everything. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he can really become a, a pretty pivotal player for the Spurs. Patty Mills there again. Actually, Patty is their third leading scorer. I find that very hard to believe, but Patty Mills is actually the third leading scorer. He's had a great season. They actually had six guys in double figures last night. And you mentioned Lonnie. Now, when he played against Minnesota, that second game, we were kind of getting on him because he had 22 in the first half and he only had three in the second half. But last night, he seemed to spread it out across all four quarters. And in the fourth quarter, he really he really shined and hit a couple of big buckets. Yeah. He had yeah, a three. That one right there. Yeah, yeah that, the one that LaMarcus, LaMarcus knocked him. over to him. Yeah, that was that was a huge three. And another guy that was impressive that we, we get on every now and then, but we praise him <laughs> when he does great, and that is DeJounte Murray. And oh, last man. night, he was running yeah. a pick and roll with LaMarcus, and he was knocking down those elbow jump shots. And that was great to see, because it's good yeah. for his confidence. And he, 
it, it, you know, they needed it right then. And I was going to say he only had one turnover last night for a point guard. That's another big thing. They've really kind of yeah. limited the turnovers. I know that's one of your favorite stats, David, oh, when we uh, look rude. back at the box score. But uh, DeJounte Murray, you know, I, I mean, you talk about the relationship he has with Pop. It's uh, very much a uh, kind of a father-son type thing because uh, as we saw with Tony Parker, Pop was very hard on Tony Parker. He's kind of done the same thing with DeJounte, and DeJounte's responded at times. Still a little inconsistent, but uh, DeJounte's been pretty yeah. solid. And, and it, the turnovers and the, mm -hmm. and the assists, they had 26 assists and only four turnovers. And I think they lead the NBA or they're one of the top teams in the A in the NBA as far as assist to turnover ratio. Yeah. And that's one of those stats that's kind of deep in the woods, way down in there in the weeds. But it is it is a good stat to look at because if you're not turning it over, then that means you're taking opportunities when you get down to the offensive end of the floor. But if you're turning it over, you're just yeah. giving away points. So so that's a good thing. And so, after the game, they talk, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's hear from uh, Keldon and Lonnie. I mean, I'm proud of my guys. I feel like we fought the whole road trip. Uh, we gave one up in Minnesota, which was, I mean, we feel like we, we was in the game. We could have that one. But um, we knew we just had to bounce back and uh, continue to keep fighting and, and trusting each other, and, and we came out to win. That Timberwolves game when I had about seven points kind of ate me up a lot, and I wasn't happy with how I played offensively and defensively. You know, um, my effort um, wasn't there, and, um, you know, I knew that wasn't me. All this hard work that I've been putting on the offseason – uh, I gotta let it be known, you know. I gotta play with that confidence. Okay, mm. so, so so here we go. The Spurs are now six and five. Yep. They are currently, which doesn't mean a whole lot right now, but they are currently eighth in the West. They are having such a stellar season mm -hmm. that TNT has yes. decided that they need some <laughs> national attention. How about that? For the do you Spurs, think huh? it's that, Spurs? or do you think the Sixers are just? Hey, whoa, 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 whoa! Hey, no, 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 no! Facts get in the way of a good story here. Spurs are having a stellar <laughs> season with all these young guys, and TNT goes, "Wow, we got to get those guys on our Let's on get our air." Wow, Plus, they're great. It's not the COVID situation Plus, with the Sixers no, at, at all. No, no, no. no, 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 no. no. Plus, that. Plus. It's all about the Spurs, baby. Plus, and it's back-to-back -back games against the Rockets. Yeah. And if you are following anything what the Rockets are doing yeah. right now, they are a complete oh, mess. Oh, my goodness. James Harden may not even be on the roster by the end of this weekend. <laughs> we have no idea what's going on there. It really makes you appreciate the fact that the Spurs, they seem to really like playing for one another and being with one another. And uh, you could really kind of feel that their relationships is definitely growing, especially as we said, on this road trip, but the Rockets right now, what a mess. And this is going to be yeah. on national TV yeah. now. And it's all about the Spurs being tonight. on national TV because they're 6-5. <laughs> and five. Awesome. And they're, they're in the hunt. So, so do you I, like, I got to go? ask, got uh -oh. Keldon, Lonnie Walker. It's a good uh -huh. question, RJ. Don't worry. <laughs> Uh, Lonnie, Keldon Johnson, um, you know, it's a youth movement. They even won last night without tomorrow, so the future of this team's bright. Question. Well, I would absolutely <laughs> say so. Yeah, and I just like the fact that these guys are willing to step up and not really, you know, let the veterans kind of dictate what's going on. I, I think that's what's been most impressive. We see Keldon stepping up, uh, you know, every other game, Lonnie the past two games. So they've really done a good job of being uh, playing at the level of a veteran type player. I am sticking with my analysis of Keldon Johnson. Uh oh, <laughs> okay. Yes, <Yeah>. stud. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah. That's all I got. The Think Mustang. Right. All you need. The Mustang. He's just a stud. <laughs> One word. Just love to watch him play. Just stud. a stud. Awesome. Well, we are excited. So tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow. TNT, yeah. 630. It's 6 an early start tomorrow. because it's on national television. <laughs> <laughs> TNT. Let's go. So there you go. David, RJ, thank you guys. Thanks, yes, guys. Thank you. All right. 935, 42 degrees. Beautiful out there, but it is cold, Justin Horn. Yeah, but the sun's out. The sun's out, and the temperatures are making big jumps here because we were in the 20s earlier. Now we're already up to 42. We're going to see 60s this afternoon. It's going to turn into a beautiful winter-like day. Let's go and take a look at the big uh, picture here across the country. Uh, a couple of things to look at here. You got some showers down there around Florida. One system, quick moving system across Great Lakes there and some more unsettled weather up to the uh, north and west. But most of Texas, very quiet at this point and temperatures, as I mentioned, on the way up. 41 degrees at the airport, 40 Holotus, 32 Bandera and Kerrville. Those are the two spots that are still right at freezing. Kerrville got down into the low 20s this morning, so it's I'm uh, going to take a little bit of time there to uh, get those temperatures warmed up. Here is uh, you're working from your porch forecast. If you're, you know, still at home and working outside today is one of those days to do it. You can sit out on your porch. The weather's that nice. Uh, we'll be around 64 degrees, 4 o'clock, and then it will fall off into the 50s by 6 o'clock. We'll talk more about our next rain chance, which does send our way next week. That's coming up here in just a couple minutes, guys.
Thank you, Justin. That's a good idea. I think we'll take our virtual learning outside this afternoon. And taking a look outside with TransGuide, there's a look at I-10 West at Loop 1604. Things look pretty calm right now. And volunteers are needed in San Antonio to help raise and train guide dogs for nonprofit organizations. Since 1989, Guide Dogs of Texas has worked to train and provide guide dogs to visually impaired Texans. The group professionally breeds, raises, trains, and matches guide dogs to owners across the state. Now, the organization says it needs puppy raisers to help with the program. Mm. The group says no prior experience is required and all training is provided. We have more information on how to get involved right now on KSAT.com. And time now is 9.37, 42 degrees out. You're watching GMSA at 9, and Panasonic showed off its new augmented reality head-up display for the drivers at the Consumer Electronics Show. How the system works to make drivers see the road differently. That's awesome. Good morning and welcome back. We have some fun stories to tell you about. A new ice cream, but for dogs and popular cookies now being sold online. David Sears is back with a wrap of the top consumer stories. Hey, good morning again. We got something that might scare you a little bit. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Especially if you drive around San Antonio a lot because we know how some drivers are in San Antonio. So let's start off with some high tech for drivers. Panasonic showed off its new augmented reality heads up display for drivers at the Consumer Electronics Show. Panasonic is aiming to change the way drivers see the roads. Woo, great. The display projects onto the windshield and is designed to precisely link up symbols and tests with real world objects and roadways in front of the car. Panasonic says imagining radar then scans the road ahead across at least three lanes of traffic. We've seen cars just cross three lanes of traffic. The True. system uses eye tracking technology to closely follow the driver's eyes. Panasonic is making the system available to various automakers, so it may be offered as an option in the future. Okay, mm. an option, mm. not mandatory. Okay, yeah. that's that's good. Ooh, there's some places that need to leave that option out. Mm -hmm. From the ground to the air, JetBlue released a new video. This is it. Shows off their new cabin in some of their planes. The company says its new Airbus A200 to 300 planes are going to come with a new design and industry leading customer experience. JetBlue says the new cabin is going to be roomy and very comfortable. It includes spacious overhead bins for more carry on bags. The new planes will also have the widest seat in the fleet mm. with easy access to seat power. And look, there's no middle seats. Uh, well, there is right there, yeah. but the other shot didn't have a middle seat, did it? Mm. That's the best part. Really? You may have noticed that the planes have bigger windows as well. Nice. Custom mood lighting. Got to set the mood on the plane, I guess. You need some mood lighting on a plane? <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> See, there's not <laughs> a disco oh, in there. Wow, wow. <laughs> that that music right there is all you need. All right, most of us can agree Girl Scout cookies, yes, yes. Yep, are a crowd favorite. Mm -hmm. Starting February 1st, they will be available for purchase online. There's also a new cookie to be on the lookout for, it's called the Toast Yay. Okay. It's a French toast inspired cookie that's dipped in icing. Oh, okay. If ordering online isn't your thing, the Girl Scouts have joined forces with Grubhub to provide contact free pickup and delivery of orders. David, what is your favorite Girl Scout cookie? S'mores. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot yeah. about those guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like them. Or Samoas, or how do you say them? Samoas? I love Samoas. Yeah, that's I got Samoas. I, I mix it as Samoas. Is oh, yeah. Oh, okay. The one that's with the, cotton, the, the, the um, coconut. The coconut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Samoas. That's my too. When you said S'mores, I was like, oh, I've never had those. Yeah, well, they got, well, they got them this year. <laughs> s'mores? Yeah, oh, they have those too. But I'd rather be on the fire pit. Yeah. Making my own. But anyway, all right, who doesn't love sweet ice cream? You can mix these Samoas with your ice cream, apparently. Ben and Jerry's, pretty sure dogs like yeah, ice don't cream. eat this ice cream. This is not for people. Oh, this is not for people. <laughs> the doggy ice cream. The ice cream company is set to roll out a line of new frozen treats for dogs called Doggy Desserts. Mm -hmm. They come in two flavors. Okay, pumpkin with cookies and peanut butter with pretzels. Okay. Does your dog really like pumpkin? Uh, they are made with non-dairy ingredients and are safe for pups to eat. They'll be available in stores later this month. Pumpkin? Mm. I think if it's an ice cream, the for dogs, they'll really? try it. Yeah, I think so. Well, at I least mean, mine will. Gordo. I mean, <laughs> you know, if you threw some, like, you know, something that tasted like steak or something, the dogs. Oh would be... well, of course, that would take priority. Steak flavored uh, ice cream, billion dollar idea. For dogs. <laughs> 
called Ben and Jerry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right, you still have a chance to be a millionaire. No Mega Millions lottery ticket matched all six numbers in last night's drawing. The Mega Millions lottery jackpot has now climbed to a whopping $750 million. It's the second largest jackpot in Mega Millions history. The largest Mega Millions jackpot record was more than $1.5 billion, one in South Carolina back in 2018. I wonder what that person or those people are doing with all that money right now. The next drawing is going to be on Friday. Wow. Exactly. What they would do with all that money? What, what they're doing with it. Remember, they, the, oh, the yeah, yeah, people yeah. in uh, South Carolina want all that they're, money? They're buying doggy ice cream. That's a lot of doggy <laughs> ice cream. That's a lot of doggy ice cream. They can feed a whole kennel. Yeah. <laughs> Thank to the dog you. shelter with that. Yes. <laughs> all right. You. Justin Horn, what would you do if you won $750 million? Uh, we've, I, I, I know. We've been over this. I don't know. I don't know. Mo money, mo problems, right? That's what uh, they say. Uh, um, <laughs> that's <laughs> true. Stay away from it. I don't know. <laughs> it's a wise quote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, let's take a look at the pollen count. Uh, it's at 480 today. And, uh, you know, we've been kind of right there at the moderate level for a couple days. Now we're hoping that maybe we're past the peak. We'll see. Uh, we had some huge days last week, but so far this week hasn't been too, too bad. We will get a front on Thursday tomorrow, and that may kick up Mount Cedar a little bit. We get some northwesterly winds tomorrow afternoon. We'll keep you posted. Outside right now, perfectly clear skies and temperatures really Pretty nice. It's warming up at least 41 degrees at the airport, 35 stints and 38 Kelly, 39 Randolph. The sunshine feels good. Uh, 45 Bernie stage, 34 Bandera, 36 in Tarpley, 37 in New Braunfels and 36 right now in Del Rio. A few 40s on the map too as you get down towards Kennedy and Pleasanton. The air is dry. Two points are in the 30s and it's going to stay that way. Uh, through probably the weekend. It's not until next week that we start to see the dew points really jump up and humidity come back, which will eventually uh, allow for some showers and storms to develop, I think, next week. But as we look across the state, it's uh, very quiet now. Our upper level low is moving away. That's the one that moved through yesterday, brought a little bit of sleet to places like Pleasanton, Durdenton. That's moving away. But you can still see some snow on the ground here in Texas from that last snowstorm, especially south of Lubbock. There's some snow on the ground. And then here's what we're watching. One storm system here across the Pacific Northwest. This will drag that front through tomorrow. And then there's one behind that. This is a huge comma shaped storm out there in the Pacific. Some of that energy will eventually work down towards Texas next week and give us some rain chances. So here's what the forecast looks like. That low that we we're talking about earlier moves away. And then uh, we get uh, another storm system that uh, moves across the middle part of the country that drags the front through on Thursday, but no rain or cloud cover with it. And then the weekend looks pretty good. That's kind of the one change to the forecast. We talked about some rain chances maybe Sunday. That was in yesterday's forecast. The models have backed off of that a little bit. So I think Sunday we may get some clouds, but I, I really don't think rain's going to be a huge issue, uh, even Monday. But as we get into Tuesday, that's when rain chances really start to kick back up. We get an, a low out to the west. That's usually a pretty good setup for us, depending on where it sets up. Uh, so we'll put some rain chances in there on Tuesday. Right now we've put it at a 30% chance, but the weekend looks good and Monday for MLK Day looking pretty good too with some uh, mostly cloudy skies. Here's the forecast for the rest of today. 54 noontime, 61 by 2 o'clock. We'll be up around 64 by the 4 o'clock hour. And then once that sun goes down, it will cool off, but we're not looking for temperatures as cold as they were this morning. 37 to start your Thursday, 70 and then turning breezy during the afternoon as that front comes through. Winds could gust 25, maybe 30 miles per hour, even on Friday uh, behind that front. It will be cooler, 62 and then 67 Saturday and sunny. A few more clouds on Sunday and uh, mostly cloudy Monday before we get some rain chances, as we talked about on Tuesday right now, a 30 percent chance. But this is pretty mild weather for January. Honestly, I'm still surprised we haven't got one of those big Arctic blasts of cold air. That's Why would true. you jinx us like that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, Sorry. I mean, I do like January and, you know, the colder weather last weekend. That was, you know, that was nice. That but, was nice. But I'm looking forward to the sunshine. And we've still got the rest of January and February. I was going to say, is this the happen. coldest we usually see? Mm. Uh, I mean, I mean we, January, this time frame. Sure. Uh, no, we can get much colder, and typically we get some of those bigger fronts, but it's just not. Not happening this year. I'm okay Not with yet. That, Justin. Not yet. Not yet. You never I'm know. Okay. <laughs> if we could be 70 and sunny all year round. I'm with you. Camper. Yeah, well, we, we need the roller coaster here in San Antonio. That's what we're used to. Sure. All right. 949, 41 degrees out. We'll be right back.
Welcome to KSET Deals at KSETDeals.com. Today we have three products for you at great prices. We start with the Retro Game Console. This comes with 620 pre-installed games and two remote controllers. Now the retail price, $99. The KSET Deals price, $39.99. That's a 60% discount. Moving on to the Aquasonic Toothbrush and Travel Case. This has 40,000 vibrations per minute. Comes with a travel case and eight brush heads. The retail price, $99. Case at deals price, $39.99. A 59% discount. Moving on to the Ultimate Anti-Aging Duo. The 24 karat gold and B Venom Anti-Aging Beauty Bundle. Nature's Botox. Retail price, $512. The case at deals price, $39.99. That's a 92% discount. And you can only get these deals at ksatdeals.com along with several others. <laughs> good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Coming up on live, Kira Sedgwick talks about her new show, Call Your Mother. Plus, Energy Fusion Yoga for Fitness Week. See you then. And we want to invite you to join us for our virtual mental health awareness town hall. It's a hardship millions of Americans live with, but they have trouble talking about it. We're going to have a panel of experts to explain mental illness and share how you can help make a difference. It's all happening Wednesday, January 27th at 2 p.m. If you're interested, we have all this information. Just head to ksaccommunity.com. All right, let's take a look outside with Transguide. There, there go. you go. <laughs> 1604 and Bandera Road. Looks like there are not any problems right now. And right there, I-10 West, Loop 1604, looking good. Yeah, full sun and those temperatures are on their way up. 46, we should be up into the mid-60s this afternoon. A little breezy tomorrow, 70, our warmest day, and then cooling down behind a front on Friday. But no rain, still staying sunny through the end of the work week. 67 and sunny. Oof. Great. It's a good year. Saturday right there. Love it. Yeah. Good morning, San Antonio, for sure. All right, so <laughs> Justin, I know you yeah. are a um, big fan of TikTok. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Are you on TikTok? I am not. How about okay. quesadillas? Do you like to get cases? Now that I can get, there. get Okay. With, yeah. <laughs> so apparently, according to this article, we've been making quesadillas wrong the entire time. What? <gasps> I know. I guess it's from like the folding and mixing. So yeah, so uh, according to this article, it says you will have to cut the tortilla halfway up, making mm. sure that you not cut it all the way so that the tortilla does not separate into two pieces. Okay, so mm -hmm. the article says super easy, but also, in case anyone out there is watching, like, what is TikTok? <laughs> it is essentially yeah. a social media platform that has like 15 to a minute, 15 seconds to a minute videos. That actually looks delicious. Yeah, that looks that looks great. So it says in one section, you'll add your ground beef or chicken. The next section, add in your cheese. The third section, you can mm. fill lettuce or any other kind of veggie. And then last section, you can have your sauce there. Yeah. It made um, it look so easy. And then the folding. So you'll fold each section so that you're left with the stacked quesadilla. Okay. I like that. Yeah, so, my, I suppose that works. I guess yeah. I've been doing it wrong. I haven't gone through all that trouble. Just throw everything in there, fold it over. And then we're done. Microwave. Fry it up. <laughs> microwave. Oh, <laughs> microwave. Oh, microwave. It. I all definitely right. do it wrong. On that note, have a great day. <laughs> Bye, guys.